I'm going to get back to your point about nudging. Yeah. Because I, th this was the I point, was this was really the point of my book. We've got these, these major discoveries about biological, physical, cosmological origins. And they're not at all what uh, 20th century scientific materialists expected. None of them thought that the universe was going to have a beginning. Einstein twisted himself into knots trying to get his cosmological constant to have exactly the right value so that that he could portray gravity, the outward push of the cosmological constant and the inward pull of gravity to get him exactly finely tuned so you'd, he could portray the universe as a, as a static entity. Mm. And then lo and behold, the hev heavens talked back and the, the evidence of the red shift and multiple other lines of evidence said, no, the universe had a beginning. If you look at an animation today of the, of the expanding universe with the now two trillion galaxies moving outward in that 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 vast, roughly spherical expansion of the universe. And then you wind that animation backwards. What it looks like for all the world is everything converging to a point. And in fact, physically speaking, that's what is going on. You can't back extrapolate any further than that creation event. And now wow, uh, that's wild. you add to what, that. What is that theory? Well, this is the Big Bang Theory, okay, right? Yeah. Okay, and it's based on multiple lines of empirical evidence, astronomical observations, but it's also there are two lines of, of effectively proof, and I use that very cautiously, but the proofs that were offered by Hawking, Penrose, and George Ellis of a singular beginning to the universe where matter, space, time, and energy begin at a point, um, and then you have the, uh, a, a proof based on special relativity, that was, which was not based on uh, which doesn't be, isn't based on general relativity and therefore not subject to some loopholes associated with that. So you've got these multiple lines of evidence pointing to a beginning. Now, are there ways to circumvent that with creative theorizing? Yes, there are. But my point has been those, those ways of creatively theorizing have their own theistic implications. And in any case, the attempt to circumvent what seems to be the most uh, natural conclusion from the evidence and the considerations from physical theory are getting very very weird. They get they get. It's like the old uh, cycles within cycles when people are trying to avoid the um, the heliocentric universe. You you have um, and so the you've got the universe from nothing idea conjoined with quantum cosmology. You've got the cyclic conformal cosmology of Penrose. Then you get the you know to get around the multiverse. You've got people or get around the fine tuning. You've got multiverses. Uh, you, you've got people positing but panspermia. That, okay, but I'm yeah. told they don't do that to get around that. They that it's a derivative of the equations. You you can generate a multiverse that way, but it its popularity I think derives from large part. Uh, Leonard Susskind very honestly put it. He said, "Without yes, the multiverse is is highly." Um, uh, counterintuitive, but without the multiverse, he said, we'd be hard pressed to answer the ID critics. And in any case, even if you posit the a multi ID intelligent, intelligent design. design, but in any case, even if you posit uh, a multiverse, it's only plausible if you have universe generating mechanisms. The two that have been proposed are string theory and and inflationary cosmology, and both of them require prior unexplained fine tuning to to generate new so universes. We're back to the so same you're back problem. to where you started. Back to the same so the problem. fine tuning issue has not been solved by materialism, but fine tuning in our experience is a product of mind, thus the inference to design.